L-systems were introduced in 1968 by biologist Aristide Lindenmayer to describe cell growth in plants. L-systems have been used for many applications and are very useful in computer graphics for generating self-similar shapes, or in other words, fractals. The core idea behind L-systems involves the process of rewriting a set of symbols. L-systems involve an alphabet of these symbols and constants, which are used to form strings or sentences. An initial string, called the axiom, is first defined and is then modified by a set of what we call production rules. So let's draw out a quick example here and get a bit of a visual intuition for how L-systems work. So we'll start with defining some variables here that we're going to use. And I'm going to say that uh, my variables are going to be A and B. So just the characters A and B. Um, we're, we're not going to have any constants uh, for this L system so far, so we'll uh, leave out uh, any constants. Uh, but we do need to define an axiom here, or the string that we're going to start with. And to keep things simple, we are going to just keep our axiom as the character A. All right, so there's our axiom. And finally, we do need to define a few rules for this L system. And these rules are going to govern how uh, this, this L system uh, evolves as we perform various iterations on it. So we're going to define two rules. The first rule is going to be that uh, whenever we encounter a character A, it is going to be converted or rewritten into the sequence A, B. All right, so that is uh, rule number one. Rule number two is going to be a little bit different, and this is going to say that whenever we encounter the character B, this is going to be rewritten as uh, just an A. All right, so A will be converted to AB, and B will be rewritten as A. All right, so let's, uh, let's uh, start with iteration, uh, iteration zero, essentially. Uh, this is the, the, the starting point for our L system. And at iteration zero, well, all we have to work with is the axiom. So let's, let's do that in a different color. Let's put that right here. So there we are at iteration zero. Uh, we just have our axiom. So at every iteration, uh, or, or every new iteration, I should say, uh, we, we simply take a look at the uh, preceding sentence and apply the production rules to every character that we encounter. So uh, for iteration one, well, all we have to work with is an A here, and we know that A is rewritten as AB. So let's go ahead and do that. So A becomes AB. All right, let's move on and do our second iteration. We'll do this a few times just to get a sense for how this works. Uh, so we, again, we do the same thing. We take a look at every character we have in the preceding sentence, uh, that being uh, starting with an A here. Well, we know that A is rewritten as AB. So that, that is that one taken care of. And then uh, we have our second character, which is AB. And we know that B is rewritten as A. So let's put that in there. All right, so we're, we're getting somewhere here. Uh, slowly but surely, we are uh, evolving this L system over time. Let's move on and do a third iteration. The same rules apply. So A becomes A, B. B becomes A. So that's, that's those two taken care of. And finally, A uh, once again becomes A, B. All right, so you can see how the, you know, we're, we're gradually increasing in length and uh, increasing in complexity as well. So we'll finish off here with a fourth iteration where we get, so, so let's get our blue color back. So we get uh, A, B for, for the first character. We get an A for the second character. Uh, this one, this A gets converted again to A, B. This gets converted to A, B. And this is rewritten as A. All right, so there we go. Only four iterations in, and we've already started to uh, describe a more complex sequence of characters. And understand, this process is completely deterministic uh, be because these rules 
are deterministic. Uh, we will always achieve the same results at uh, any given iteration using a given set of rules and a, uh, a, a given starting axiom. All right, and actually a good way of looking at this evolution of this string is to draw somewhat of a hierarchical tree, right? So we could see that A became AB, uh, that this A here became this AB, and well, this B became that A. And then we can continue doing this uh, and, and see how this evolved uh, over various iterations. So it's, it's sometimes helpful to uh, see this in a, in a more visual sense, all right? So we can see uh, what resulted in what. All right, so understand, so far we've only discussed how L systems uh, give us a way of creating a, a complex sequence of characters. Uh, but what we're going to need to do eventually in order to use this in computer graphics is to translate this sequence of characters into something visual, such as perhaps uh, indicating the presence of a, a geometric feature of some sort, or maybe even as a set of instructions of what features to draw where. And we'll get into this uh, as, as we move through this topic.